Hi everybody, we're gonna have a little bit of a lesson with a song that I've already taught you. This is old Joe Clark, we sang this a few times. Uh, the last time we did this, we were working on alternating, patting and clapping during the chorus part. Let me just sing the song so you can remember how it goes. First. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I say. That's the melody, the chorus, and then we did our rhythm padding and clapping for the part that goes like this. Remember we did pat for four first. Pat, two, three, four. Clap, two, three, four. Pat, two, three, four. Clap, two, three, four. And then we stop. Let's just review that. Anything you want to come and help me with that part? Okay. He's going to do the pat, <laughs> the patting and the clapping one time. Fare thee well, old Joe Clark, fare thee well, I say. Fare thee well, old Joe Clark, I ain't got none to say. Perfect. And then we did it where one group did patting and then the other group did the clapping. Now this is hard for me to do because I'm playing the instrument, but um, we'll just do it without the dulcimer one more time. Ready? Fare thee well, Ocho Clark, fare thee well, I say. Fare thee well, Ocho Clark, I ain't got long to stay. Right, make sure you do four because it's really important. Okay, so now, we're gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Instead of patting or clapping just four, you are going to create some sort of rhythmic solo. So that means coming up with a rhythm that takes the same amount of time as four, but is more interesting. So you could go, um, if you're clapping, it could be, right? If you're patting, it could be whatever, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna make a more creative rhythm. So right now I want you to choose, are you gonna do the padding time or are you gonna do the clapping? Make a choice and here we go. Fare thee well, old Joe Clark, fare thee well I say. Fare thee well, old Joe Clark, I ain't got long to stay. Got it, make sense? Okay, so we're going to do that same thing, but with the music. So you do, which one are you going to do? Um, do the do the first one. Can you, you're doing a padding? Yeah. yeah. So he's going to do the first one. So at home, you are going to create the rhythm for the second four beats. He's not going to do it, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to play the instrument. All right? So you're doing the first four. They're going to do the second four. I'm playing the instrument. Fare the well, the well, the well, the Good. Same thing. We're going to do it again. Let's do it twice in a row this time, okay? We're going to do it same way, but this time we're going to do twice in a row. You're going to still do the padding, and you folks at home are doing the clapping, creating some sort of interesting rhythm. And let's try it again. Again, yeah, he says his thighs hurt. So that's why we're going to do something a little more challenging, a little more interesting. I went into my kitchen and I got some items to use as musical instruments. Now this is interesting because Old Joe Clark is a song that comes from the Appalachian Mountains. And the Appalachian Mountains are very remote. They're very rural. They're very hard to get to and from, especially at the time when this song was made. There were no cars, there were no trains, there was no real way of mass transit. So to get up into the Appalachian Mountains was difficult. So the people in the Appalachian Mountains 
like us now, don't have access to many, many things. All of my instruments, well, not all of them, many of my instruments are at school. So I can't give you instruments today. So raid your kitchen, see what you've got. In my kitchen, I had some rice that makes a great shaker. We have just a plain old cup. The cup, if you, uh, I don't think you can see right here. Let's see if I can get you to see. You can use a cup like this. You can use a cup in many different ways to create a rhythm. I also have in my kitchen spoons. Spoons is something that they used in the Appalachian Mountains, I think, to make music with. And the way they did it is they would take the spoons and they would put them on one side of the finger like this, on both sides of the finger. I don't know if you can see like that. Here, let me show it that way. Wrap their hands around. And then when you tap them, they make noise. It takes quite a bit of practice and skill to be able to play the spoons this way. So you can try if you want to pause the video and see if you can do that. That's kind of cool. There's lots of cool things you can do with the spoons, or you can just take them apart and play them that way if you wanted, or even drumming them on the table or the floor, whatever. Either way, you can take a uh, wooden spoon and a pot of some kind. play around and get different noises with this guy right here. You can use the same spoon and I have a cooling rack. This is pretty cool. This reminds me of the Appalachian Mountains. They use these things called washboards. The washboards they used to use to clean their clothes and they learned that they make pretty cool uh, a pretty cool instrument. So this reminds me a lot of that. You just scrape the spoon and make some pretty cool rhythms with that. That's actually what that is. Uh, and you could also use, if you want a different sound, something like this, a little egg beater. Or any combination thereof. Uh, another good choice is simply pencils. They also make really good instruments. So pause the video, get yourself one or two musical instruments from your kitchen, and Nathan is going to pick something from here that he wants to use. I'm gonna pause it as well. Okay, so hopefully you found something interesting in your kitchen to use to play. Nathan found something that he'd like to use for his part. So we're gonna do this a few times. Uh, let's just do it once, just to make sure we understand the concept. Nathan will be going first with his rhythm and you will be following with your rhythm second, okay? Fairly well, Ocho Park, fairly well, I say. Fairly well, Ocho Park, I ain't got monkeys, say me, pet. You. Nathan. You. Got it? Does that make sense? Okay. So now we're going to do it again. This time let's do it. I want to do it four times in a row. Four times. He's like, that sounds crazy. Four times in a row. Four times in a row. So same thing, he's going first, you're going second. We're gonna do it four times. That means we're gonna sing the chorus four times total. Fare well, Ocho Park, fare well, I say. Fare well, Ocho Park, I ain't got one to say. Time. All of them are starting at number two. Very good. 
said, okay, you make them happy because he's done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hard work to be on camera so long. Okay, so Nathan's going to leave us, but we're not done. We're going to do it a little bit more. Bye. Bye. So now I would like you to invite somebody in the house to come and join you. They're going to do the other part. Now you can decide because now that you're skilled at doing it, maybe you want to be person one. Maybe you want to do the first time through and have your person who you're bringing in do part two. Or maybe you want to stick with part two and have them do part one. doesn't matter. Uh, you can pause this video, find a person, and explain what they need to do, and we'll get started again. Okay, hopefully you found somebody. So here we go. I'm going to do uh, the whole song, and you are going to provide those two solo rhythmic parts. We're going to do it four times, just like before. Here we go from the first time. One, two, sing the song. Very well, old Joe Clark. Very well, I sang. Very well, old Joe Clark. I ain't got more to say. There will be more things to do with old Joe Clark coming up soon. Uh, so I will see you then. Bye, everybody.